welcome to this vlog for the 63rd auction here at Scotch Whiskey Auctions. Big Petrie here again to take you through this wonderful selection of whiskies that we have to whet your appetite, this amused bush of, of cracking uh, whiskies that we have in this auction. Now, we have an unbelievably brilliant lineup in front of us here, and it's one of the largest selections we've ever chosen for the vlog, and that's because this month's auction is, is incredibly deep with wonderful, rare whiskies that, that frankly are desperate to drink. Um, so we're, we've, we've limited ourselves to a little theme. We've had to ignore, uh, for the vlog, we've had to ignore 40 year old Kurosawa's. There's a lovely 1976 Pappy Van Winkle that's in this month's auction. There are a lot of incredible things. So when we go live tomorrow, please take your time to get in and have a look around. Maybe have a look at distilleries that you're not so familiar with. There are some wonderful rare examples from the stories you might not have heard. We've got some of them here. Hopefully we can draw up a bit of love for them for you. But before I go on too much further, let's get on with the bottles. Now, first up, we have this wonderful crystal decanter filled with Irish whiskey. It was distilled in 1943. It was bottled 42 years later uh, by Douglas Lang. When Douglas Lang were an independent bottle, they weren't selling through their own market. They were selling things through a uh, duty-free shop, and, and their, their target market was more of the, the, the Far East. What we have here is this wonderful, rare old Irish spirit. And, and it's a way of looking at one of the world's great distilling nations, the, the, their liquid, in an entirely different way. Because usually you think of Irish whiskey, it's light, it's young, it's fruity, it pairs brilliantly with Guinness. And um, this is obviously a much richer, much more tannic form of, of that spirit. So a great chance to look at the look at a different distilling nation's whiskey from a different point of view. Next up, we have the first of a theme. You're going to hear it all the way through here. It's Gordon Head, it, it's Gordon Heads, it's Cadden Heads, and Gordon and McPhail. These two great independent bottles this month have just ramped up an unbelievable number of whiskies. So we're going to do a wee close up on, on Cadden Heads this month. And I'm going to take you through some other wonderful bottles. And to start with, we have a, a Talisker, which was distilled in 1947. Now this is the, the lava of the Coolins, that wonderful spicy chili kick dram. And it was bottled for Kate yeah, Gordon McPhail for their Connoisseur's Choice range, distilled in 1947. So an absolutely wonderful bottle to start off with. Next up we have a bottle that was distilled in 1938, so before the Second World War. And it comes from the Glenmossy distillery. Again, connoisseur's choice. Again, nice old age. It's 43 years old. Now, the great exciting thing about Glenmossy is that most people don't find it very exciting. It is a workhorse. It's a stalwart. It's the heart of Haig's blend. But it doesn't mean it doesn't produce great whiskey. If it didn't produce great whiskey, it wouldn't be the heart of one of the biggest and most successful blended whiskies of all time. So this is that wonderful chance to see how the spirit has evolved over the years, what it brings to the table, why it has remained at the core of such a huge brand for such a great length of time. It's an incredible setup. They've got uh, over a quarter of a million casks aging there. They have dark draft com compactors to create the, 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 the draft they feed the cows. They've got Manichmore distillery in the same site as well. Um, well worth a look at Glen Rossi. And the next one we come to is Cadden Heads Club Mosey. This was distilled a little bit later on in 1957, bottled in 78. Uh, and again, this is from Gordon Mc... Uh, sorry, this is from Cadden Heads. Now, last month we talked about Gordon McPhail and how important they were to the whiskey industry in general. And Cadden Heads, um, their involvement cannot be overstated as well. The oldest independent bottle in Scotland, they were the f one of the very first people to ever offer single bottles of single malt whiskey to individuals. Because previously, to get hold of single malt, if that was what you think is, bl blended whiskey was the core, was the heart product at that point. You had to buy a cask and then keep it in your cellar and pour it off for yourself and your friends and your family. What they were doing there was, was offering individual bottles and people thought this would never last. Why would people want whiskey from only one distillery? Uh, uh, there's all of these complaints that have sort of played Cadden Heads as they were, they were starting up, but they have lasted, and they have lasted through an unbelievable quality and commitment to the quality of the cask. What you'll see in these bottles is they're wonderful, they're simple, they're straightforward, because what is important to them is the whiskey. Unchill filtered and uh, no caramel colouring, even from way, way back. So first up we've had this Glenn Rossi. 
Next up we have Dalwhinnie. Now you've probably driven past Dalwhinnie at some point or seen pictures of it, a wonderful picture of this distillery. And it, it, it's a wonderful chance to taste old Dalwhinnie when it's not been designed to go into that incredibly successful 15 year old that has dominated uh, it was markets for across the years. It's still in the top 10 selling single malts of all, you know, in the world. And this one here just gives you a chance to try a different aspect of that because uh, when we're creating Dalhoney, it's quite a heavy sulfurous spirit that dissipates over time in the cast. This will give you a chance to see a wee bit more into that original spirit. Now the great thing about Cabin Heads is that it continued this simple straightforward approach up to the present day and this one here is a little known. So that's that lost Clyde distillery, uh, the oldest distillery still producing stocks or still having stocks bottled. And this one is from 1977 and it's bottled at 39 years old. Now you could have made an awful lot of that. It's a lost distillery, it's a 39 year old product. But instead of putting bells and fancy whistles on it and bows and ribbons and magnets and other things, one point label, there's your information, there's your whiskey, go. That's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Next up, Another distillery I lost, this is Glen Lochie, and Glen Lochie um, goes under the radar quite a lot. Um, it was culled in that horrible 1983 year when we lost so many distilleries. Um, but again, this one was distilled in 1967, so you're, you're going to get an idea, it was bottled just after the distillery had, had closed, an idea of what it was producing, a chance to literally chase whiskey that you're, you're going to struggle to find anywhere else. I mean, it, it's a, a fantastic chance to taste, and it is that phrase, liquid history. Next up we have another uh, distillery from, in fact the only surviving one in uh, Fort William, and it's Ben Nevis, named after the, the, the tall mountain, uh, and this, this, this one here is bottled at 47 years old. Now Ben Nevis, uh, a large, like a third of its uh, proportion of spirit gets uh, taken over to Japan for, for Nika's blends, uh, all black and things like that, but they are capable of producing wonderful rich sherry whiskies and this one here with the 47 years in the cast is going to have a heck of an oomph added to it. Now last but by no means least uh, we have two distilleries, three bottles, one bottler. The bottler is Gordon McPhail, the two distilleries are Mortlach and Glenlivet. Now Glenlivet obviously it was once the longest uh, glen in the valley uh, the jealousy of the product uh, and its, its success even had one of its competitors threaten to burn uh, its distillery down with John Smith at the heart of it. Now you know you're doing well when somebody threatens to burn you down with you at the heart of it. So this is a 49 year old whiskey bottled for Sustanti by Gordon McPhail. An absolutely, just a, quite a quite fantastic display, I'll just bring it forward to you here, in this lovely decanter shape here. The depth of this whiskey for one of the world's great distillery names. Up here we also have uh, Mortlach. Mortlach distilled 2.81 times. This iconoclastic distillery that stands in the centre of space. Like the, uh, you know, it is the first distillery in Dufton of the seven stills of, of, of Dufton. And yet it is so unlike most of the other styles that have dominated Speyside today. You think of Speyside, you think of light, you think of cereal, you think of all these lovely custody light notes and biscuity and stuff. And then here comes Mortlach with that big, beefy, beast of a nature. And here we have two absolute monsters. They are 50 years old, this one here with the Book of Kells label on it. And this second one here, bottled much later, in a lovely sleek black bottle. The reason I've chosen both of them is A, they're 50 years old, B, it's Mortlach, and I love the fact that it stands out in such a night, it just, it just stands out from the crowd, and B, see, it's Gordon McPhail, an eye to the future, bottling, putting stocks aside for 50 years at a time when they've gone through highs and lows and gluts, and they keep their faith to it, and they bottle it at a brilliant time. Now, ladies and gentlemen, as I've said, we have an absolute ton of great whiskey in this auction. So please, when we go left home, take your time, get a piece of the time, get in, have a look around. And just remember, Scotch whiskey auctions, don't lose your bottle.